In this video, I'm going to give you the basics of ops trading so you'll understand how options work, why you might want to trade them, and also some of the benefits, but also some of the challenges of trading in options. Before we get to that, let's cover the basics of ops trading. Let me talk you through why they exist. First, what is an option? An option is a contract or agreement that allows the buyer of that contract to buy or sell a stock at an agreed upon price on or before a set date. Each option contract is for 100 shares. So each contract gives you the ability to buy or sell 100 shares of that stock at agreed upon price on or before that set date. That's how it works if you buy an option contract. However, you can also sell an option contract. If you sell an option contract, then you're simply selling what I mentioned earlier. You're selling someone else the right to either buy a stock from you or sell a stock to you at a set price by a set date. Since you're selling them that right, you're paid what's called option premium or you're paid cash up front. Now I know that was a lot to take in, so please feel free to rewind that and listen to it again if you need to. If not, let's keep going. Now let's talk through a few important definitions, and then we'll get to the fun part, where I'll show you how options can help you. At that point, it'll all come together for you. There are two types of options. There's calls and there's puts. A call option gives the buyer of that option the right, but not the obligation, to buy shares of stock at an agreed upon price on or before a set date. A put option is the exact same thing, except that it gives the owner of that option the right, but not the obligation, to sell shares of stock at an agreed upon price on or before a set date. That an agreed upon price is referred to as the strike price. And the date that this must be done by is referred to as the expiration date. That's the date that the option expires. So that's the basic terminology in option trading. Now let me show you some examples of how these two types of options work, calls, and puts. Let's look at an example of Apple stock. Today, Apple is trading right around $140 per share when the market closed. Let's say that you believe that Apple is going to go up in price over the next 30 days. Because of that, you bought a call option at the 140 strike price that expires in 30 days. Now that you own this call option, you have bought yourself the right to buy Apple stock at $140 at any time over the next 30 days, no matter how much the stock is trading for. So if the stock goes up to $150 within the next 30 days, since you own this 140 call option, you're allowed to buy the stock for $140 even though Apple is currently trading at $150. But now instead of a call option, let's say that you bought a put option. Let's stick with that same 140 strike price put option that expires in 30 days. If you bought that put option, then it allows you to sell your Apple stock at $140 per share at any time over the next 30 days, no matter at what price the stock is currently trading at. That will definitely come in handy if Apple were to continue the downward move that it's been in and go down to say $127.50 per share. Because you own that 140 strike price, even if Apple were to go down to say 127.5 per share, you'd still be able to sell this Apple stock at $104 per share anytime before this option expires. So you're able to sell it for a lot higher price than what Apple would be trading at. So that's pretty simple, right? Again, if not, please feel free to rewind this section and listen to it again. But why would you want to buy an option? Well, let's first look at a put option. Notice where the orange arrow is that Apple has been going down over the past several months. If you believe that it might continue to go down, you'd like to protect your stock from losses, then you can buy this 140 put option that expires in 30 days, and no matter what Apple is trading at, over the next 30 days, you can sell it at 140 per share. Owning that put option will protect your stock if Apple continues to go lower. It's like insurance that you buy on your car. By buying that put option, you're protecting your stock the same way you'd be protecting your car if you bought insurance on it just in case the car was damaged and wasn't worth as much as it had been before. When you buy a put option, you're buying insurance on your stock. For example, let's say that you bought 100 shares of Apple stock. So that you paid 140 per share for that stock. If we do the math, that means that it costs you $14,000 to buy those 100 shares of stock. We all know that stock prices, that they go up and they go down. And if something bad were to happen to Apple, it could go way down. So technically, you have $14,000 at risk by owning these 100 shares. You see, it's somewhat similar to buying a car for $14,000. You would definitely buy insurance to protect the value of that car if something bad were to happen to it. You're doing the same thing with your Apple stock. You're purchasing insurance on your investment in Apple. You purchase insurance by buying this put option because remember, owning a put option allows the owner or buyer of that put option to sell stock at a set price during a specified period of time, which in this case is the next 30 days. Remember, you don't have to sell at that price, but if it benefits you, you can choose to sell at that 140 price. So let's review what we've just discussed. We own 100 shares of Apple stock. We paid 140 per share for it. So our total investment is $14,000. 
but we want to buy some insurance on this stock to protect us just in case the price goes down. To do that, we buy a put option. But now let's think about the other side of this transaction. If you bought the put option for insurance, then that means that someone has sold that insurance to you. So the question is, who has sold you that put option? The answer is any trader who's willing to be paid by you to take on your risk. Yes, the risk, the Apple might go below 140 per share over the next 30 days. You see, that's the basic idea of a put option. As an investor in Apple stock, you're willing to pay someone to take on your risk in case Apple were to go down in value. By owning that put option, you get the benefit of owning Apple stock if it goes up, but you don't have to worry about it if the share price goes below 140 per share. Now let's look at how much this put option or insurance will cost you. There are several factors that go into determining how much an option will sell for. I will get into that later, but for now, let's just see how much this insurance in this situation will cost you. In the red box, see that the 140 put option that expires in 30 days is selling for between $6.20 and $6.50 per share. Buyers are trying to buy it or are bidding $6.20 per share, and sellers are asking or trying to sell it for $6.50 per share. Let's just say that we go in the middle and it will cost us $6.35 per share to buy this put option or this insurance. Remember, we have 100 shares. So if you do the math, it will cost us $635 to buy this put option. So for $635, our $14,000 investment is completely protected for the next 30 days. If Apple were to drop in price below 140, we can still sell the stock at 140 anytime over the next 30 days. Going back to our car insurance example, it's like if we have full coverage insurance on our car. Now let's talk about what could possibly happen over the next 30 days with Apple stock. We'll say that Apple goes up to 150 over the next 30 days. If that's the case, then you made just over $10 per share. But remember, it costs you $6.35 per share to buy that insurance. So in this scenario, you'd walk away with a profit of $3.65 per share because that protective put option you bought would expire worthless. So for the 100 shares, we have a net profit of $365. You made some money, but you realize that you could have made more if you hadn't bought that protective put option. On the other hand, the person that sold you that put option that received your $635 is happy because they get to keep all that money. But what if this scenario played out a different way? What if instead of Apple going up to 150, what if it went down to 127.5 per share? Now Apple is trading at $12.50 per share less than the 140 that you bought it at. If you multiply that times 100 shares, then you would have lost $1,250. But remember, you bought that put option at the 140 strike price as insurance. Now you can go back to the person who sold that put option to you and say, hey, I want to sell my Apple stock at 140, even though the stock is trading at 127.5. And you would do that by exercising your option and therefore you'd be able to sell your shares at 140. As a result, you didn't lose anything on the stock. You're able to sell it for the same 140 that you bought it at. Your only loss would be the cost of buying that put option contract, which is $635. And that's a whole lot better than losing the whole $1,250 if you hadn't bought that put option as insurance. Now remember that the person who sold you that option, they agreed to buy the stock from you at 140 per share. So yes, they got to keep the $635 that you paid them for the put option, but now they own the stock at $140 per share, and it's only selling for $127.5 per share. As a result, they get to sell it for that current price of $127.5 per share for a total loss of $6.15 per share, or just hold on to the stock for a while and hope that it goes back up in price and then sell it at a later date. So that's what put options are. Insurance for an investor to protect their investment. But you might be saying, Randy, I don't own any Apple stock. I'm still be trying to learn about options so I can make money by trading in options with very little capital and never have to deal with owning outright stock. And that's one of the awesome things about options. You can still trade in options even if you don't own any stock. But I want you to understand how put options work and what their purpose is even if you only plan to trade in options and not outright stock. But now that you know that buying a put option is like buying insurance on a stock that you own and selling a put option is selling someone else insurance on stock that they own, let's now dig into the call option side of option trading. Let's look at why you might want to buy a call option. This time, let's say that you don't own any Apple stock at all, but you think that Apple is going to go up in price over the next 30 days. But the problem is that Apple is currently selling for $140 per share. So if you were to buy 100 shares, it costs you $14,000 to buy those shares. To avoid coming out of pocket $14,000, you can instead buy a call option. Owning a call option Apple will allow you to pay a small option premium for the right to buy shares at a later date if Apple goes up in price. Let's look at an example of that. Again, let's say that Apple is trading at 140 per share. So in order to buy 100 shares, it would cost you $14,000. 
Instead of having to put up $14,000 to buy Apple stock, let's instead buy the 140 call option that expires in 30 days. Remember, that call option will give us the right to purchase 100 shares of Apple at 140 per share at any time over the next 30 days. Just like before, the cost of this call option will be determined by several factors that we'll learn about later. But for now, you see that buyers are bidding or trying to buy this option for $5.75 per share, and sellers are asking or trying to sell this call option for $5.90 per share. Let's say that it will cost us $5.80 per share to buy this call option contract. If you multiply that times the 100 shares, so that it will cost us $580 to buy this call option contract. Now let's go back to our two possible scenarios. First, let's say that Apple goes up from 140 to 150. Remember, you own the 140 call option. At this point, there's two things you can do. You can exercise the call option, which simply means that you decide to take advantage of your right to buy the stock at that lower 140 price. So you would now own 100 shares of Apple at 140 per share. As a result, you're up $10 per share. And since you own 100 shares, overall you're up $1,000. But remember, you had to pay $580 for the call option. So your net profit is really only $420. Now you might be thinking, if I just bought the stock outright, I would have done a lot better than that. And you're right. But consider the other scenario that could have played out. What if Apple had gone down to 127 and a half? Remember you own the 140 strike price call option that you paid $580 for. That call option gives you the right, but not the obligation to buy Apple at 140 at any time before expiration. Since Apple is now trading lower than that 140 per share, you of course wouldn't bother because you can go out and buy Apple for 127 and a half. Since you bought an option, you're not forced to buy at 140 per share. You simply have the right to buy at 140 if you choose to and if it benefits you. So owning this call option does not require you to buy Apple at 140 if it's not in your best interest. In this scenario, you simply be out of pocket the cost of buying that call option, which is $580. Therefore, instead of being down $1,250, you'd only be down $580, which is the cost of the call option that you bought. That's the benefit of buying a call option rather than buying the stock. You have to come out of pocket a lot less cash, and as a result, you have a lot less at risk. But to do that, you have to pay out some option premium. By the way, you can do the same thing with the put option. You don't have to own the stock to buy a put option. If you buy a put option without already owning the stock, then you're simply hoping the stock will go down because if you exercise your right to sell stock that you don't own, then you simply are short the stock. You'll benefit if the stock continues to go down in price. So to recap, if you buy a call option, you're hoping that stock is going to go up. If you buy a put option, you're hoping that stock is going to go down in price. Now, I'm not saying that this is a strategy that you should use when it comes to option trading. In fact, this strategy is not my main option trading strategy. But it is important to understand how options work. Please also keep in mind that you don't have to exercise an option that you bought. You can still be buying an option at one price. If the position goes your way, you can sell that same option at a later date for a higher price and profit from it without having to actually assign the option. In part one of this beginner's guide to optioning video series, we introduce you to the idea of options. You learn that you can buy a call option if you think the underlying stock will go up in price. You can buy a put option if you think the underlying stock will go down in price. I know this concept of trading options is probably still new and confusing to you because I know it took me a while to get comfortable with the concept of it. But this video will help you to understand how options work a little bit better. As you probably know, although the agreement between a buyer and seller of an option is called a contract, it doesn't actually involve a real piece of paper or a little paper contract. Everything is done electronically. You can buy or sell an option contract with your stockbroker. It literally just takes a few seconds to buy or sell an option contract. You can do it right from your computer or from the app on your phone without having to call anyone. It works the same way that it works with buying and selling stocks. Here you see what's referred to as an option chain. An option chain simply is a list of all the different options that we can trade in. It shows the price of each one of those options. It shows how much buyers are bidding or trying to buy the options for, and how much sellers are asking or trying to sell the options for. Every option trading broker will have a similar type of option chain you can look at. Here you see the exact same option chain, but from my E-Trade trading platform. In addition to finding available option chains in your account with your broker, you can also find them by going to places such as Yahoo Finance and clicking on the Options tab. Here you see the call option chain for Apple with the expiration date of August 5th. Let's use the option chain found on E-Trade because it's a little bit simpler of a platform than interactive brokers. Again, you're looking at the option chain which shows you all the available options and prices of each option. Almost all the popular companies have options. And even many of the ones that aren't quite as well known, they also have options that you can trade in them. However, as you can see here, not every company has options that you can trade. 
To see if a stock has options that can be traded, you simply type in the ticker symbol and go to the options section. If there's no options available, then it'll simply say no options found. Let's go through this example using our Apple stock. So by typing in Apple's ticker symbol, AAPL, you can see that there are a bunch of expiration dates and strike prices to choose from. I'm just showing the five strike prices that are closest to Apple's current price. Today is the first day of August. Notice that there are multiple expiration dates for August. And then if I go down to the farthest dated option, the farthest one out in time expires in June of 2024 or just under two years from now. I know this can seem overwhelming at first, but it'll get easier for you and soon will come second nature to you. Now let me explain to you in the simplest way possible how these options work. But before we get to know how these options are priced, let's go over some of the very basic characteristics of options. And I'll even show you how you can simply read this option chain. So the first thing you want to do is to select an expiration date. Remember that the expiration date is simply the date that the option contract expires. As I mentioned earlier, there will be a whole bunch of expiration dates to choose from. And some platforms, like in my interactive brokers platform, in addition to the expiration date, will also tell you how many days there are until that expiration date. However, E-Trade doesn't show you that. It just shows the actual expiration date. So I click the date where you see the red arrow, and we've now selected the August 19th of 2022 expiration date. And as you can see in the red box, so that I won't overwhelm you, I've asked E-Trade to only show me the 11 strike prices closest to the current stock price. Now remember, at this point in your training, we're just trying to cover the basics. So I'm not going into a lot of detail and discussing the expiration date that you should pick because there are different strategies for different expiration dates. I will get into that later, but for now, let's just cover the basics. So we chose the August 19th of 2022 expiration date. That's right at 18 days from now. And you see the strike prices that are closest to Apple's current price, which is $161.51. Here you see at the red arrow on the left side of the screen in the red box that these are the call options that expire on August 19th. And now in the red box on the right side, these are the put options that expire on the same expiration date, August 19th. So let's say that we want to trade in a call option that expires on August 19th. Now we just need to choose which strike price we want to trade in. As you can see in the red box, the strike prices are listed vertically in the middle of the screen between the calls and the puts. The lower strike prices are up top, and as you go down the vertical column, the strike prices go higher. Now let's select a strike price here. Let's pick the 165 strike call option. So now you know how to navigate the option chain to find certain options. You see that you can find a call or put option with a certain expiration date, and now you know how to find the strike prices. But on this option chain, you can also see the price that each option is currently trading for. You see, just like with stocks, you have a price that buyers are bidding or trying to buy the stock at, and the price that sellers are asking or trying to sell the stock for. It's the exact same thing with the price of an option. Generally, you're able to buy or sell these options at some price between the bid and the ask price. Worst case scenario, you should be able to buy it by paying the asking price or sell an option by selling it for the bid price. Think of the bid as the price that buyers would love to buy the option at, and the ask as the price that sellers would love to sell the option at. Generally, buyers and sellers, they end up meeting somewhere in between so that both of them should be happy. So let's say that you decided that you wanted to trade this August 165 call option. Let's talk about how much it will cost you to do this trade. Stocks trade in number of shares. You can buy one share or as many shares as you want or can afford, but options don't trade in shares. They trade in contracts, and one contract is going to control 100 shares of stock. Remember that a call option gives us the right to buy a stock at the strike price at any time before expiration. So if we want the right to buy 100 shares of Apple anytime between now and August 19th at 165 per share, then we'd buy one call option contract. So if you want the right to buy 200 shares of stock, you simply purchase two contracts. It's 100 shares per contract. Let's just say we want to purchase one contract of this 165 strike call option. How much total would it cost us to actually buy this call option? You see that the bid is $2.16 and the ask is $2.20 per share. So if we go in the middle, let's just say that it would cost us $2.18 per share to buy this call option contract. But remember, each contract lets us control 100 shares, so you need to multiply this $2.18 times 100 shares for that one contract. If you do that, you'll see that it'll cost us a total of $218 to buy one call option contract of Apple at the 165 strike price that expires on August 19th. I know that can be a little bit confusing, but in time, you'll get used to it and it'll come easier for you. If you want a simple way to look at how much each contract will cost, just take what the option should sell for and then remove the decimal since you're buying 100 shares worth and you have to multiply that number times 100. 
that'll give you an easy way to see how much one contract will cost you. Remember that you don't actually have to own or trade in the stock to trade in options. You can simply trade in options all by themselves. So how would that work? Well, just like with stocks, the price of them go up and they go down every day. The same thing happens with the price of options. Here you see the chart reflecting the price of this Apple August 19th $165 call option. As you see, just like with the stock, the price of this option goes up and it goes down. For this example, let's just say that we bought one contract of this call option. And let's say that it costs us a total of $218. Let's say that over the next week, the price of this option goes from $2.18 per share up to $3 per share. Since we bought it for $2.18, obviously we're hoping to sell it for a higher price than we paid for. So we're keeping an eye on what this option is selling for so we can pick the best time to sell it for as much profit as possible. Let's say that we decided that if the option got to $3 per share, we would sell it for that $3. In order to close this position, we'd sell this call option and if we got $3 per share, then we'd get a total of $3 times 100 shares or $300. So if you do the math, it cost us $218 to buy this option and we sold it for $300. So we have a profit of $82 total. And that's if we own just one contract. If we did two contracts when we initially bought this option, then initially it would have cost us $2.18 per share times 200 shares worth or what the two contracts equates to. So it would have cost us $436 total to buy these two contracts. Since we're selling two contracts for $3 per share, then $3 per share times 200 shares worth means that we'd be selling it for a total of $600. If you do the math, then we'd have a net profit of $164 for those two call option contracts. Now there are several reasons why the value of an option goes up and it goes down. Back in the first video of this beginner's guide, we alluded to the fact that the price of an underlying stock affects the price that an option is selling for. However, there are two other factors that go into what determines the price of an option. We'll go into those factors later in this video, but just remember that typically, if the underlying stock price goes up, then the value of a call option will also typically go up. If the price of the underlying stock goes down, then typically the value of a put option it will actually go up. Remember, when you own a call, you're hoping that the underlying stock price goes up. Conversely, when you own a put, you're hoping that the underlying stock price goes down. So let's recap what you've learned so far. You've learned what an option chain is and what it looks like. It's simply the place where you look to find all the options that are available to trade in. You've learned how much they're selling for. You can also find option chains in multiple places, including on your stock and option broker's account. Typically, most trading platforms make it really easy to trade those options, so you'll find it's easiest to look at those option chains on the trading platform that's on your phone or on your computer that you plan on placing the trade on. In the trading platform, you also learn that the option prices have a bid and an ask just like stocks do. You learn that one option contract gives you control of 100 shares of the underlying stock. So anytime you're looking to trade an option, you want to multiply the price of the option by 100 since it gives you control of 100 shares. In part one of this beginner's guide to trading options, we use insurance as an analogy to explain how options work. We're going to continue with this insurance analogy in this video. We're going to talk about two of the main three factors that will cause an options price to go up or down each day. Once you understand how these factors affect the price of an option, then we'll be able to begin talking about different option trading strategies that you can use to profit from those option price movements. And of course, that's when the fun starts because you'll be able to have the opportunity to put some cash into your pocket by trading in options. The first factor that influences the price of an option is the price of the underlying stock. The second factor is the time or days until expiration. And the third factor is the volatility of the underlying stock. Let's first talk about how the underlying stock's price affects the price of its options. To do that, let's go back to what a put and call option allows its owner to do. Remember that if you own a put option, it gives you the right to sell the underlying stock at an agreed upon price called the strike price on or before a certain date called the expiration date. Let's go back to our Apple stock example. Here you see in the blue box in the top left corner, the Apple closed today at $154.53. Now going back to our car insurance example, we want to protect ourselves in the event that Apple was trading anywhere below $155 between now and October 21st, which is 45 days away, then we could buy the $155 put option that you see in the red rectangle. If you did that, it'd be kind of like buying full coverage insurance on your car. You'd be protected 100% of the $155 that you paid for the stock because that put option would allow you to sell your shares at any time before expiration at $155 per share. So if Apple stock price tanked, then no matter how low it went, if you own this 155 put option, you'd be able to sell it at 155 anytime between now and October 21st. As you can see in the red box, that insurance would be kind of expensive. 
you would have to pay somewhere between $6.90 and $7 per share. So we'll just say you'd pay $6.95 per share for that insurance. So if you had 100 shares you're trying to protect, then remember you'd buy a one option contract and it'd cost you $6.95 per share times 100 shares or $695 for that insurance. However, let's say you didn't care about having full coverage insurance on the 155 you paid for the stock. Let's say you just wanted to protect yourself in the event that there was some really big crash in Apple stock price. So you wanted to buy insurance that protects you if Apple went below $145 per share. Now you see in the red box that this insurance would cost you around $3.50 per share or $350 for the whole 100 shares or for one contract. The reason why the lower strike price put option is cheaper is because you would only be protected if Apple dropped below 145 as compared to the more expensive one which gave you protection below 155. So you get $10 less in protection per share but it also costs you $3.45 per share less for that lower strike price insurance. Now let's look at an Apple call option example. Let's say that you didn't own any stock but you own the 140 strike price call option in Apple that's in the red box. Remember, since you own that 140 strike price call option, it'll give you the right to buy Apple stock at 140 no matter what price Apple is trading at between now and October 21st, which is the expiration day. And that coincidentally is 45 days away. Since Apple is currently trading at 154.53 cents, this option is going to be worth at least the difference between Apple's current stock price and the 140 call option strike price. So this 140 call option strike price will be worth at least $14.53 because if you exercise this option, you would have an immediate $14.53 per share profit in this scenario. This option is what's called in the money because it allows you to purchase Apple stock at a discount to the current market price. So keep that term in mind because you're going to run into it a lot when you trade options. In the money is when if you exercise the call option, you'd be buying the stock at a discount from what it's currently trading at. Let's look at another possible scenario with a call option. Let's say that instead of you owning the 140 call option, let's say that you own the 160 call option. So this 160 call option is actually higher than what Apple is currently trading for. Actually, Apple is currently trading for $5.47 per share less than your call option strike price. If we fast forward to expiration, you see this option, it will actually be worthless because who would want to buy Apple at 160 when they can buy it at the market price for $5.47 less per share or $154.53. Because of that, this option will be worthless if it were expiring today. When a call option strike price is higher than the current price of the stock, this option is called out of the money. When a call option is out of the money, it does not give us the opportunity to buy the stock at a discount because we can buy the stock at a discount by just buying it out in the open market. Now I know those are probably new terms for you, but in time they'll become second nature to you and I'll make sure that we review everything in just a few minutes. One nice thing with many trading platforms is that the options that are in the money, they're typically shaded. Here you see in the red box that the call and put options that are in the money are shaded in light blue and the ones that are out of the money, they just have a white background. Most trading platforms do something similar to what we see E-Trade has done here. So just to recap before we move on, in the money call options are calls whose strike price is less than the current price of the stock. Out of the money call options have a strike price that is higher than the current stock's price. For puts, it's the complete opposite. Now here's when things start to get interesting. Notice that the farther an option is in the money, the more it costs. Here you see that the 140 call option is selling for around $17.50 because it's $14.53 in the money. However, the 150 option is only selling for just over $10 per share because it's only $4.53 per share in the money. So the deeper an option is in the money, the more it will cost if you're looking at the same expiration date. The reason for that is that the deeper in the money call option allows you to buy the stock at a bigger discount. So it's going to be more expensive than a call option that only allows you to buy the stock at a smaller discount. But as you know, all throughout the day, the price of a stock, including Apple, it'll go up and down. Here you see today's chart of Apple stock price. Each one of these little candles represents one minute. Notice up top at the white line that Apple's high price today was just over 157. Now at the yellow line at the bottom, you see that its low was right around 154. Throughout the day, it really moved around a lot in between those two prices. So throughout the day today, if you owned a call option, as Apple's stock price went up and down, the value of this call option also went up and down, especially if the option was in the money. The reason that the option is becoming more and more valuable because as Apple's stock price goes up, you'll be able to buy that stock at a greater discount. 
If you're wondering how much an option will be worth at its expiration day, it will simply be worth the difference between the stock's current price and the strike price of the option. Or another way to look at it is that the value of an option at expiration will be how much the option is in the money. The amount that an option is in the money is also known as its intrinsic value. So at the expiration of an option, it'll be worth how much it is currently in the money, or it'll be worth what its intrinsic value is. Let me show you an example of this. Let's now look at the Apple options that expire in three days on September 9th. Notice that the September 9th 144 call option is selling for right at $10.75 per share. That option is currently $10.53 per share in the money. So the difference between how much the option is in the money and the value of the option is only 22 cents per share. Now if we just move the strike price $1 farther in the money to the 143 call option, now you see that the 143 option is selling for around $11.73 per share, but it is $1 more in the money than the 144 call. So it's actually $11.53 per share in the money. Because it's farther in the money, this 143 call option will sell for more than the 144 call option. You see that the 143 call option is selling for 98 cents per share or pretty much $1 per share more because it's $1 per share more in the money. Since this 143 call option will let you buy at a greater discount, it costs you more. In this case, $1 more since the discount will be $1 more. And now if I switch this option chain to some call options that are out of the money, for example, the 165 call option is only selling for around nine cents per share because it's so far out of the money and it expires in only three days. If Apple stays around the price where it's at now, this 165 call option will be out of the money so it'll be worthless this coming Friday on September 9th because no one will buy Apple at 165 if it's currently selling for around 154 per share. So let's just do a brief review. At the expiration day, the in the money options will be worth the difference between the strike price and a stock's price, otherwise known as the amount that the option is in the money or its intrinsic value. And the out of the money options will all be worthless. But before expiration, as you saw in our example, even those out of the money options, for example, the 165 call options that expire in three days, even they still have some value because there's a slim chance that Apple could go all the way up and reach this 165 call option in the next three days. Because of that possibility, that's why it's currently selling for nine cents per share with three days left until expiration. So if all out of the money options will be worthless on the expiration day, why do they have value now? This leads us to our second factor that influences the value of an options price. We've talked about how options are basically insurance, and of course, you have to pay for that insurance. But as you're well aware, if you own a vehicle, you can't just pay for insurance one time and then have it forever. You have to pay for your insurance every single month to keep that insurance active. So the longer you have the insurance, the more money you get to pay for that insurance. Options work in the same way. That expiration date, it's just like you having to pay for insurance every single month. If say, for example, you wanted to buy three months worth of insurance, it might cost you $300. But if you wanted to buy six months worth of insurance, it might cost you $600. So it's the exact same way with an option that expires in say 60 days. It will have a higher price than the same strike price option that expires in only 30 days. As you just learned, options that have a strike price that does not allow you to buy or sell the underlying stock at a better price than the stock is currently trading at will be worthless at expiration. But that's only true at expiration when there's no time left for this option to possibly go in the money. For example, this September 9th 165 call option that expires in three days is only selling for nine cents per share. However, if I switch the option chain over to October 21st options that expire in 45 days, you see that the same 165 strike price call option is selling for around $2.84 per share. The reason why it's selling for so much more is that there's 43 extra days for this option to possibly go in the money. However, if you fast forward to October 21st, this option's expiration day, if Apple is still trading for around $154.53, then this 165 call option that's currently selling for $2.84 per share, it too will be worthless because it will be out of the money. You see, buyers are willing to pay $2.84 per share because they know that there's the possibility that Apple might end up above this 165 strike price over the next 45 days. So there's a chance that this 165 out of the money call option might go in the money if Apple's underlying stock price goes above 165. Now going back to our car insurance example, you don't know if your car insurance will be worth the $100 per month that you're paying for until the end of the month. If you were to get into an accident anytime over the next month, you'd be glad that you paid that $100 for that month. 
but you won't know if that insurance was worth it until the end of the month. The same is true with options. The buyer of this 165 call option will not know if it's worth paying 284 per share until October 21st. If Apple were to go way up over the next week, then they know it was worth it at that point, but right now they don't know it because Apple is so far away from 165. As we mentioned earlier, notice that the farther out of the money these call options go, the cheaper they become. The reason is that the farther away they are from the current stock price, the less likely it is that the option will go in the money. For example, if you look at the very bottom 180 strike price call option, you see that it's selling for around 47 cents per share because it's fairly unlikely that Apple will reach 180 over the next 45 days or by October 21st. On the other hand, if we now look at the 155 call option, that's only about 47 cents from where Apple is currently trading at, that option is selling for a whole lot more. It's selling for right at $7.10 per share because it's a lot more likely that this option will go in the money between now and October 21st. Remember that the amount that an option is in the money is known as its intrinsic value. On the other hand, when an option is out of the money, like this 155 call option is in the blue box, this 155 call option is selling for $7.10 per share. Because it's out of the money, there is no intrinsic value in this option. So that $7.10 per share is all extrinsic value. If you now look at the 150 call option that's currently selling for around $10.10 per share, it's made up of both intrinsic and extrinsic value. Remember, the intrinsic value is how much the option is in the money, which in this case, since Apple is currently trading for $154.53 and the strike price is $150, its intrinsic value, or how much is in the money, is $4.53 per share. So the difference between how much this option is in the money and what it's selling for is $5.57. And that $5.57 is known as its extrinsic value. If an option is in the money and it still has some time until expiration, it will most likely be selling for some amount more than just its intrinsic value. So the price of the option would be made up of both intrinsic and extrinsic value. Just remember that on an options expiration day, whether it's in the money or out of the money, the extrinsic value will all be gone. And all you'll be left with is the intrinsic value of the option. So if the option is not in the money, it will be worthless. So for example, if we switch back to our 155 strike price call option that's currently out of the money and selling for $7.10 per share. If Apple's at the same price that it's at now, $154.53 on October 21st, this option will have gone from selling for $7.10 per share all the way down to zero. And remember, one option contract is equivalent to 100 shares, so the $7.10 times 100 would cost $710, and it'd be worthless on October 21st if Apple was still trading below this 155 strike price. Another important point you want to consider if you're buying this call option is that in order for this call option to make you money, it had to go above 155 by more than the $7.10 per share that you paid for it in order for it to be profitable. So Apple would have to go higher than $162.10 per share in order for this option to be profitable by expiration. This is one reason why it can be challenging to be profitable when buying options. When you buy an option, time is your enemy. You need the stock to move in your favor fast enough to offset that time decay. So not only will the stock have to move in your favor by a significant amount to offset the cost of buying the option, but it'll have to do it fast enough to beat the time decay that eats away the value of that option every single day. If you're curious how much of an option's value decays each day due to time decay, here you see on my interactive broker trading platform, notice the column labeled theta in the yellow box. At the yellow arrow, at the 155 strike price call option, interactive brokers is estimating that it's October 21st 155 call option that expires in 45 days, they will lose 8.4 cents per share per day due to time decay. So if everything else remains the same, this option that was selling for $7.10 per share today, by the end of tomorrow, it will be selling for $7.01 because it will have lost right at 8.4 cents per share due to time decay. Keep in mind though that just because you bought an option, it doesn't mean you have to wait until expiration to sell that option. You can sell an option at any time. So if an option moves in your direction quickly, you can always sell it well before expiration to take advantage of that profit. In certain situations, we do buy options. However, predominantly, we are the seller of options. As you can see, time decay is one big reason why buying options is not one of our main option trading strategies. As option sellers, time is our friend, not our enemy. 
I'll get into our favorite option strategies in a future video, but I didn't want you to get discouraged by thinking that you could only buy options and not sell them. I love selling options, and you'll see why when we get to the strategy portion of this option trading course. So let's review what you learned. You learned that options have an expiration date just like your car insurance does. The longer you own an option, the more you have to pay for it. So an option that expires in 60 days will be more expensive than the same strike price option that expires in 30 days. You also learn that you don't have to hold an option all the way until expiration. You can sell it at any time before expiration at its current market price. You learn that time decay will slowly eat away at the value of an option until it reaches the expiration day. You also learned about intrinsic and extrinsic value. Intrinsic value is simply the amount that an option is in the money. Extrinsic value is the remaining value of the option. So an option's total value is made up of intrinsic and extrinsic value. If the option is not in the money, then it's only made up of extrinsic value. On the expiration day, an option will only be worth how much it is in the money or how much its intrinsic value is because all the extrinsic value will be gone. And finally, you learn that when you buy options, you're fighting time decay because a little bit of the extrinsic value of an option gets eaten away every day due to time decay. Next, we're going to talk about the third factor that influences the value of an option. After you understand that, you'll be ready to begin learning some option trading strategies that we like to use. In part three of these beginner's guide to trading options, we discuss two of the three factors that influence the price of an option. We discuss how the price of the underlying stock can affect an option's value, and then how the time or days till expiration affect the price of an option. In this video, we're going to explain the third factor that affects the value of an option, which is volatility of the underlying stock. Understanding it is very important if you want to be a successful long-term option trader. Volatility is simply how far a stock's price tends to move. It's also a good measure of how much the owner of the stock has at risk. For example, a stock that moves up and down a lot is considered to be a highly volatile stock. Because it moves around so much, that stock will be riskier to own because on any given day, it could have a large price drop. On the other hand, if a stock doesn't move around a lot, it's considered to be a low volatility stock. Because it has low volatility and doesn't move around a lot, it'd be less risky to own. As you can imagine, a highly volatile stock well, its options are also going to be highly volatile. Just like a volatile stock is more risky, the options on that stock will also be more risky, so they will cost more. And a stock with low volatility, well, it will have cheaper options because there's less risk involved in those options. And this makes sense because going back to our insurance analogy, if we buy an option as a way of protecting our investment, we're paying that put option seller to give us that insurance. Since a highly volatile stock is riskier, the person selling that insurance will require more premium because they're taking on more risk. However, if a stock does not move around a lot, so it's not very risky, a put option seller will be willing to sell you a put option to protect your stock for a lower amount because they have a lot less at risk. So more risk means the option will cost more, and less risk means the option will cost less. Let's look at this example by considering a life insurance policy on two people that have everything in common except that the first person exercises on a daily basis, eats a healthy diet, has never smoked a cigarette, and has a low stress life and doesn't have any health problems. The second person hasn't worked out a single day in their life, they eat fried food every day, they smoke a pack of cigarettes every day, they have an extremely stressful job, and they actually have a heart condition. Now whose life insurance policy do you think will be more expensive? That's right, the insurance policy will be a lot more expensive for the unhealthy person because of a lot more risk that they will die sooner rather than the healthy person. Think of the unhealthy person as a stock with high volatility and the healthy person as a stock with low volatility. So a highly volatile stock will have expensive options just like an unhealthy person will have expensive life insurance policy. And a low volatility stock will have cheap options just like a healthy person, they will have cheap life insurance. Let's look at a real life example of this. On the left, you see that Amazon closed at $84 per share. And on the right, you see that IYR closed out at $84.19 per share. So they're basically at the same price. However, the implied volatility, or IV, of these two stocks is very different. You see that Amazon's implied volatility over the next 18 days is 42.5%, whereas IYR's implied volatility is only 22.8%. So IYR's volatility is about half of what Amazon's is. Let's see how this affects the value of their options. Notice here on the left in the red box, the Amazon $84 put option that expires on January 20th is selling for $3.35 per share. Now look over on the right in the purple box. Here we see the IYR same strike price, $84, in the same expiration day. January 20th put option is selling for a lot less. It's selling for $1.70 per share. 
So just like the volatility is about half as much for IYR compared to Amazon, so too IYR's $84 put option is selling for about half as much as Amazon's. And remember, they have the exact same strike price, the same expiration day, and the underlying stock is pretty much trading at the same price. So why is there such a big difference in the price between these two options? The answer is volatility. That's why I mentioned that volatility is so important if you're an option trader. In this case, the more volatile Amazon stock options, they're equal in every way except for volatility. So Amazon's options are a lot more expensive than the less volatile IYR stocks options. This applies to every strike price in the option chain between the two stocks and also applies to both puts and calls. So how will this affect your option trading? Well, just like a stock's price, it can go up and down. Its implied volatility can also go up and down. If for some reason the implied volatility of a stock goes up tomorrow, then the price of its underlying options will also go up tomorrow if nothing else changes. Higher volatility equals higher option premium. So what might cause the implied volatility of a stock to go up or down? Well, it can really be any number of events. For example, some unexpected positive or negative news or even an earnings announcement. But ultimately, the implied volatility of a stock is actually calculated based on supply and demand of its options. And this makes sense. For example, if some news came out that a company is being investigated by the government for fraud, then suddenly there's a lot more risk in owning the stock. So volatility would go up. Well, if that happens, people that own the stock are going to either want to sell the stock or buy put options to protect their stock. If that happens, there'll be a lot more buyers for those put options than sellers who are willing to take on that risk. Because the demand for these put options goes up, the price of the put option will also go up. And because the price of those put options goes up, then the applied volatility figure will also go up. So if a lot of option buyers enter the market, that will cause the price of options to go up. And if a lot of option sellers enter the market, that will cause the price of options to go down. See, the option prices tell us what the implied volatility is or how much the market believes the stock will move around through the expiration day. So going back to our question, what causes the implied volatility of options to go up or down? Well, the answer to that question is the same things though it causes the supply and demand of those options to go up or down. Now going back to our example with our company that's being investigated by the government for fraud, fear would cause the owners of the stock to want to buy some put options to protect their stock. Because there's suddenly more investors buying put options, that would cause the price of those put options to go up. And that would in turn increase the implied volatility of an option. So implied volatility is kind of like a gauge of fear for a stock or for the overall market. Now, I know that might make your brain feel like it's being tied in a knot, but don't worry about it too much. The details are not that important. Just understand that implied volatility can go up and down based on the market environment. But if the implied volatility of a stock goes down, the price of its options will also go down. So to recap, the three factors that affect the price of an option are first, the price of the underlying stock, second, the time to expiration, and third, volatility of the underlying stock. So let's look at an example here of Amazon and talk through each of the three factors that affect the price of an option. First, notice that the price of Amazon were to go up by $1, the price of the call option will go up in value, whereas the price of the put option will actually go down in value. Now, if we go back to our $84 price, let's see what effect these days until expiration has on an option. Let's say that we go from 11 days to expiration down to only one day. Notice that time decay has eaten away a lot of the value of the call and put option. Now let's go back to 11 days and let's see the effect of volatility on the price of these options. Let's say that volatility drops from 36.98% down to only 10%, so it drops way down. Watch how the value of these options also drop dramatically. Then if volatility were to skyrocket, say it went up to 100, watch how the value of these options also would skyrocket. So to recap, when it comes to how the price of the underlying stock affects the price of an option, if you buy a call option and the price of the underlying stock goes up, if everything else remains the same, the price of the call option will also go up in value. Conversely, if you bought a put option and the price of the underlying stock goes down, if everything else remains the same, the price of that put option will go up. When it comes to time until expiration, an option that expires in two days will be less expensive than an option that expires in 10 days because the option loses some of that value or some extrinsic value every day. That's also known as time decay. So if you buy options, time decay works against you as your enemy. However, if you sell options, time decay works for you and as your friend. And finally, if the volatility of a stock goes up, the price of its options will also go up. And if the volatility of the underlying stock goes down, the price of its options will also go down 
if everything else remains the same. Now the question is, how sensitive is an option's price to these three factors? For example, if the underlying stock's price goes up or down, how would that affect the value of the option that you bought or sold? Also, how do we know how much of the option's value will be lost each day due to time decay? And finally, how do we know the effect that an increase or decrease in volatility will have on the price of an option? Well, all those questions are answered in what's known as the option Greeks. Option Greeks are the measure of how an option's price will react to changes in the underlying stock price, time to expiration, and implied volatility of the underlying stock. This knowledge will help you in picking a strike price that you buy or sell, the expiration date that you should trade, and also help you to understand the risk you're taking when you trade options. Knowledge of what these Greeks are telling you will help you to be a more successful long-term option trader. So let's talk through what the option Greeks are and what you need to know about them. There are four main option Greeks, Delta, Gamma, Theta, and Vega. Let's first talk about Delta. Delta tells you how much that option's price will change if the price of the underlying stock goes up by $1. For example, here you see the option for Amazon on that same expiration date that we were looking at earlier. Notice here that the $84 put options delta is negative 0.481. Since this is a negative number, that means that the value of this put option will go down by 48 cents for the next dollar that Amazon goes up. Remember that the value of a put option goes up if a stock declines, but the value goes down if the stock actually goes up in price. On the other hand, here you see that same expiration date for Amazon, but we're now looking at the call options. This is the same strike price, $84 for this call option. If Amazon goes up by a dollar and nothing else changes, the value of this option will go up by 52 cents. So for this call option that's currently trading around $2.94 per share, if Amazon were to go up by $1, that option should increase in value by 52 cents, so it would then be worth $3.46 per share. So just keep in mind that the delta of an option tells you how much the value of an option will go up or down if the underlying stock goes up by $1. That's why as you see here on the left side in the yellow box, the delta is positive for the call options because the value of a call option will go up if everything else remains the same if the underlying stock goes up in price. However, on the right, you see the put options deltas are actually a negative number because the value of a put option will go down in value if the underlying stock goes up in price. But here's the thing about Delta. Delta actually changes as the stock's price goes up and down, and it changes by the amount of gamma. Now, I don't really look at gamma too much, but just so you know what gamma is, gamma is the amount that Delta will actually change by if the stock moves up by $1. So here with our $84 call option, you see that gamma is 0.062. That tells us if Amazon were to go up by $1 and nothing else changed, Delta would go up by 0.062. So it would go from 0.52 up to 0.58. But as I mentioned, don't worry about Gamma too much. We hardly ever look at it. But it's important to understand what happens to Delta as a stock price moves around. For a call option, as the underlying stock goes up, Delta will also go up. That means that as a stock's price goes up, Delta will go up faster and faster for each dollar as the underlying stock continues to go up. And the opposite is true for puts. If you buy a put and a stock goes down in price, if nothing else changes, that put will go up in value faster and faster for each dollar that the Amazon stock price drops. Another way to look at it is that as a call or put option goes farther and farther in the money, the value of that option will increase or Delta will get bigger as the option's value gets bigger. Now let's talk about Theta. Theta is the amount that an option's price will change if one day passes. Looking at this $85 Amazon call option, notice that Theta is negative 0.12. That means the value of this option will go down by 12 cents per share when one day passes if everything else remains the same. If you look at the far left, you see this option is trading for somewhere between $2.36 per share and $2.56 per share. So let's just go in the middle and say that it's currently trading for $2.46 per share. When one day passes, if everything else remains the same, this option's value should go down by $0.12 cents per share. So tomorrow, this option should be trading at $2.34 per share. That's why I mentioned earlier that Theta, otherwise known as Time Decay, is the friend of the option seller, but the enemy of the option buyer. Now keep in mind that this doesn't necessarily mean that it will go down by 12 cents tomorrow. Remember that there are other factors that affect the value of an option, including volatility and the underlying stock price. But if neither volatility nor the underlying stock price change, the value of this option should go down by 12 cents per share because of time decay or theta. Going back to our option chain, notice that theta is negative for both calls and puts 
because it doesn't matter which one you're looking at, the value of an option should decrease over time due to theta or time decay. So theta is the amount that an option's price will decline by if one day passes and nothing else changes. Now there's just one more option group we want to talk about, and that's Vega. Vega is the amount that an option's price will change by if implied volatility goes up or increases by 1%. So going back to our Amazon example, if volatility went up by 1%, the value of this $85 call option should go up by 5.8 cents per share. Again, going back to our put and call option chain, notice that Vega is positive for both puts and calls. So when volatility increases, the value of both puts and call options should increase as well. And they will increase by the amount of Vega for that option. And this is true because the increase in volatility will result in an increase in the price of all its options. So to recap, Delta is the amount by which an option's price will change if the stock goes up by $1. Gamma is the amount that Delta will change by if the stock goes up by $1. Theta is the amount that the option's price will change by if one day passes. And Vega is the amount that an option's price will change by if the underlying stock's implied volatility goes up by 1%. One more point that you might find interesting about Delta is that Delta can also be looked at to represent the number of shares you are long or short in the stock. What I mean by that is, Notice in the left yellow box that the delta of the $85 call option is 0.459. Since each option contract is equivalent to 100 shares, if you were to buy the $85 call option, delta also tells you that you would get the same benefit if the stock went up in value as if you owned 45.9 shares of the stock. On the other hand, if you look at the put side, on the right, the $85 put option's delta is negative 0.543. That tells you that if you own the $85 put option, it'd be the equivalent of selling short 54.3 shares of Amazon. That's not vital that you remember, but as you grow in your option trading knowledge, it could be a piece of information that comes in handy. One final interesting point is that as you can see here in my main option trading account, our overall portfolio can also be viewed through the lens of Greeks. He said that with my portfolio, the overall theta for this entire portfolio is 608.3. That means if everything else remains the same, my portfolio should increase in value by $608.30 per day as theta or time decay eats away the value of the options that I have sold. And the other Greek you see there is Vega. Notice that mine is $734. That means if the implied volatility goes up for this overall portfolio by 1%, the profit and loss of the portfolio will go down by $734. Or if volatility goes down, then the value of this portfolio will go up by $734. This now concludes the beginner's guide to option trading. To continue your option trading education and to begin actual trading, I encourage you to check out the link in the description below to get access to the intermediate course for option trading. In there, I go into great detail about exactly how we pick the stocks we trade in, and I show you a real life trading session with trades that I actually did. I also talk you through how to exit and deal with positions as expiration day approaches and positions that go against you. This will enable you to immediately begin to put cash into your pocket by buying and selling options. If you'd like to receive alerts when we do trades, consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see some of my favorite tips and tricks that I use to pocket hundreds of thousands of dollars every single year by trading options, check out the video series at the link above in the description below entitled Trade Options Like a Pro. Until next time, happy investing. We'll see you again soon.